This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Uh, Red Raider football with Joey McGuire last night, Jamie. I got, uh, got some notes from uh, his program last night that uh, we had here on Double T 97.3. Okay. Uh, reiterated um, from uh, last week that from an offensive line standpoint, did not finish blocks. He said not maintaining contact on the backside. Felt like that the runs of two and three yards should have been much longer, i.e. 20 plus, uh, if they'd have just stayed with their blocks. Um, felt like one play here, one play there. And then on the road, they let you know Wyoming back in. Um, all these are things that we had discussed previously. Um, he's still frustrated by the Josiah Pierre uh, late hit. Doesn't feel like it was a late hit. It's funny. I had more issue <clears throat> with the other personal foul penalties than that one. Okay. I mean, yeah, he... I had much, much more issue with that. I thought the little shove to the shoulder was just so weak. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the the quarterback who faked in and then faked out and then was half inbounds and half out when he got hit is that was just that's too hard for a a defensive player to pull up there. So okay. I had much more issue with that one than Pierre's. Okay, um, you you know talked about how all seventeen of their points in their comeback were on drives that were continued by penalty. So obviously that's you know a point of improvement for this week. You know, if you're going to get off the field, um, you can't help them out by giving them first downs with, with penalties. Uh, he said, frustrating thing as a head coach is that he didn't find a way to win. He said he takes pride in winning close games. And uh, he's. And we did a lot of that last year. Did a lot, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And I Those think overtime games. Done a lot in his, his career <clears throat> on that. He said, uh, he said he was still soul searching on what he can do to help this team. Um, and uh, with regard to uh, fans, he said, "Whatever you're saying, I'm thinking." <laughs> so, you know, he talked about that a little bit on uh, on Monday, but uh, I think he basically said, "I I hear you, and uh, I know what you're saying, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking the same thing." Uh, he was asked about incorporating the tight end in this week, and he said, "This, my mama says." Throw to the tight end, you're going to win. He said, tune in to find out. So maybe we'll see more of the tight end this week. That'd be great. Um, He said he feels good about Saturday. He said uh, that uh, he feels good about getting the ball to Mason Tharp, especially in the uh, the red zone. He said uh, 6'9". Is uh, and, and Coach and not, Lanning and not at his ankles and not at his ankles. Yeah, Coach Lanning from uh, Oregon said hard to game plan six nine. That's what Mason Tharp is. Um, he did talk about, and so did Coach uh, Josh Cochran. Talk about you know the tight ends and he talked about Jake York, um, who's a walk on, and uh, Coach Cochran talked about how he'd worked his tail off and had deserved um, what he gotten and uh, just. And Coach McGuire even, you know, kind of mentioned at some point in time he'll probably be on scholarship, you know, when they get probably when they get something freed up, they can put him on, uh, put him on scholarship that he's earned that. Jaden you know, York, right? Jaden York, I'm sorry, yeah. I think I said Jake. Yeah. Um, he said if he could rewind it, um, and I thought this was interesting, especially since you've got a trip to BYU coming up, and they they'd already said that they were going to leave on Thursday. He said if I could rewind it, I'd keep us on our usual schedule. Altitude didn't have anything to do with it. So I thought that was interesting. I wonder if they'll change that. Though. Change that to, to uh, from the BYU game. You know, there's still uh, plenty of time to, uh, to do that you know, between now and then. Uh, he said they've got a who's who coming in uh, with, uh, with recruits for this weekend. Um, he said a lot of their commitments. So they're, they're excited about that. And I've always... And he talked about this a little bit. I've always thought that's interesting. You know, you're 
you're getting ready for these games of which you only have 12, you only have six. So you have to take advantage of, you know, bringing in your kids that you're recruiting or your commits and you're trying to hang on to them until they, until they sign. And you're balancing that with balancing, bringing all these kids in and setting these things up and events and entertaining them and, Obviously, you've got a support staff. It's not Joey McGuire that's yeah, not that's, making the reservations for him. And that's why you have a recruiting coordinator that's yeah. in charge of entertaining them and at times swinging them by Coach McGuire or a position coach or whatever. But at the same time, it's not Coach McGuire that's dragging them around campus, yeah, he's, showing them the engineering building. Sure. Or anything. He's not setting up the tables on the football field and yeah. putting out the linens, you know, to to entertain them and their parents. But still, he he, he and he talked about that. He talked about you know, his recruiting staff and coordinator and James Blanchard and all those, all those folks that, uh, that, that do that. Um, so that was, uh, those are some of the things from, from last night. Um, you know, obviously, um, playing a big, you know, playing a, a great opponent, um, called Bo Nix, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, called them one of the best teams that they'll face all year. Um, and, uh, a real challenge. Um, that uh, that they'll face tomorrow in uh, in Oregon. He said he asked Tyler Shuck because that came up a little bit about you know obviously Shuck playing for Oregon in the past and you've got another player that's played there and a couple of coaches that worked there blah 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 and uh, he he said uh, he asked Tyler Shuck how many how many guys he actually knew on the team he said I know three mm-hmm. okay so that I mean it's been you know some time since he's he's been here this is his third year so. You know, their roster turnover, graduation, transfers, people quitting, all those kinds of things. Um, so all those, all those things, um, kind of, kind of play into it. Um, um, so we'll see. We'll see if they get the tight end more. And uh, you know, Josh Cochran was talked about that, and he he said, "I promise you, they're involved in the offense." <laughs> he said, "He goes with our offense, with the progression offense, we get it to the open receiver." He said, with regard to Mason Tharp and Baylor Cup, he, he called them two of the best run-blocking tight ends that he's been around. He said, people don't see that. He said, their physicality sets them apart. Mm, that's good. That's so, good. I don't, I don't think anybody's ever knocked them for their blocking ability. Mm-hmm. Not not that we've all you know applauded them for yeah. either, uh, just because those are things that are, are harder to notice. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think... I think for the most part, our fan base loves those guys. Yeah, just want to see him get the ball a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that nobody's down on the tight mm-hmm. ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do not know if Micah Hudson will be there. I did not get the uh, invite list for this for this weekend. I've, I have no idea. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Today is uh, September the 8th, 2023. Here is Jeff McGuire with the Stan Sports History. Big day in history history yeah? today. Okay. A couple of big notes that we'll get to here in a minute. But first, we have to talk about 1939 because Indians' Bob Feller at 20 is the youngest pitcher to win 20 games in a season. Hmm. Just 20 years old. Impressive. 1954, with a 3-2 to count, Phillies' Richie Ashburn fouls off the next four Teen pitches. Wow. <laughs> and earns himself a walk. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, you would have hated to have seen him like ground out to the pitcher after that, right? No, no question. Yeah. 1958, Pirates Roberto Clemente ties the modern record of three triples in a single game. 1963, Milwaukee Braves future baseball Hall of Famer Warren Spahn ties Christy Matthews. With 13 20 win seasons. 1973, our favorite Major League Baseball manager, Billy Martin, is hired by the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Would not go well. Can't you say that pretty much anywhere he was hired? I don't know. There, I mean, he won in Minnesota, he, he won with the Yankees. Brawled with the Yankees. Wouldn't say it went well with the Yankees when you have a brawl. Yeah. I just want it to be known that Joe Torre is my favorite <laughs> baseball manager ever, not Billy Martin. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. 
1984, U.S. Open Women's Tennis. Martina Navratilova retire, uh, retains her title, beating Chris Everett Lloyd 4-6, 6-4, 6-4. 1985, Pete Rose ties Ty Cobb with 4,191 hits. He's going to get it. Uh, he's going to get the record here in a couple of days, right? In San Diego? Well, that would be, you know, how history is going to go, but yeah. we haven't gotten that far yet. Sure. Uh, 1996, Pete Sampras retains his title at the U.S. Open, beating fellow American uh, Michael K Michael Chang, 6'1", 6 6 6 Michael Chang get the credit that he deserves from a tennis standpoint, or is he just overshadowed by Sampras and others? No, uh, he absolutely should be. Overshadowed? Yeah. Yeah, I know, but yeah. I mean, he, but he was a good player. He wasn't great. No, he, he was, was a good. solid player. He won a yeah. major, shocked the world. But, um, yeah, he's, I mean, he was, he was not Sampras or Agassi or sure. Courier. Sure. Yeah, he deserved, I mean, I don't mean that in a negative way, but mm -hmm. those guys deserve. You think he gets enough, he's gotten enough credit. Those guys deserve more shine than Okay. Him. Yeah. And in 2021, Derek, G Derek Jeter, Ted Simmons, Larry Walker, and Marvin Miller are inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. They were elected in 2020. But the ceremony was postponed due to the pandemic. It is National Date Nut Bread Day. Yeah, I'm completely out on that. Uh, I'm going to hold off on birthdays for today because tomorrow, mm -hmm. Hunter Hargrove turns 29. Nice. And on Sunday, Hunter had a huge, huge hit off the third base bag. And that. 2016 game in Omaha against TCU that gave the Red Raiders the lead in the eighth that he would be loved and remembered for forever if Luke and Baker had not hit one to the moon in the next mm -hmm. inning. I mean, Hunter, would that would have been, I mean, a huge, huge moment. But Luke and Baker happened, and yeah. unfortunately... Hunter how, gets forgotten. How quickly things get forgotten. Hunter's big clutch hit gets forgotten. Yeah. Sunday, Brandon Carter, former offensive lineman for Texas Tech football and a really, really good one, turns 37. You know, I always remember about Brandon Carter is when he... His makeup and his mohawk? Yeah, when he got suspended by uh, Leach and I think came and sat in the stands. He, he sat over on the east. He was all over the stadium that day, but I think he, he sat some on the east side too. But he was a large man and had that mohawk and the paint and you know it's just it's crazy I will, man i think it was his junior year could have been a sophomore year when he got hurt and they're carting him off the field and he gives the guns up and the crowd absolutely went nuts sure yeah i remember the face paint and the and the mohawk and all all that was and then tearing up the locker room and getting after houston right yeah mm -hmm. and getting suspended Dang. also Tearing up the locker room and criticizing the coaches, I guess. Also on Sunday. Man, of course I met Chuck. That's my guy. Brandon Francis celebrating a birthday. Also turns 29. Same age as Hunter Hargrove. He's 29 already? 29. Wow. Hunter's 29 already? You got another, don't you have another big birthday on Sunday? Don't think so. Is it yours, Jeff? Mm. Nope. Oh. What am I missing, Chuck? Oh, never mind. It's a, it's another another week away. Sorry. Aha! I didn't miss one <laughs> you yet. You didn't miss one, no. Uh, today, however, Pink turns 44. Bernie Sanders is Pink. 82. <laughs> David Arquette, 52. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, 42. Latrell Sprewell is 53. Uh, Terrence Williams, 34. And Garrett Cole is 33. And I promised you two little things on history. 1974, in a controversial move, President Gerald Ford pardons mm. Richard Nixon for all crimes he may or may not have committed against the federal government. It cost him four more years. Well, I think a lot of things cost Ford a whole no, four was, more years. That, but. Was, that was the nail in the coffin there. And on this day in 1900, one of the deadliest hurricanes in U.S. history hits Galveston Island, killing more than 6,000 people. Mm. The storm caused so much destruction on the Texas coastline that reliable estimates 
for the number of victims are difficult to make. Some believe it may be as many as 12,000 people perished. And that would make it the deadliest hurricane in American history. And that is this day in sports history. All right, this day in sports history, 653 this morning. You know how you... uh you remember things from back in the day and some maybe you guys maybe you guys don't but on this day 9 8 76 somebody saw fit to give me my learner's permit as a as a driver i, I always remember that it was 9 8 76 you know for the 9 8 7 6 okay and then unfortunately for me on 9 8 78 i uh, made a left turn and uh somebody was coming and we had a little collision <laughs> my monte carlo my poor nice Monte Carlo. It's got a little day. Got a little ding in it. A uh, happy birthday to washed up guy. He'll be 72 on Sunday. Our senior advisor to the morning drive. Not even close to washed up. No, not even close. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Take your thoughts and comments this morning. Score predictions on uh, the 8th Scoring Center chat line. Go to double dot 973com for that of the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open as well at 806 771 0973. Uh, tomorrow, Oregon and uh, Texas Tech. Uh, it's a highly anticipated one. Um, you know, just from the standpoint that usually this time of year you're you're not playing this level of uh, opponent. I like it. I mean, I wish you'd won last week so you felt better going in. And and maybe the team has, has put this put last week behind them, you know, and you know, one of the things that Coach McGuire reiterated on Monday, which now seems like man, about a week or so ago, that don't let Wyoming beat you twice. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to do that. Um, Oregon's good enough to beat you on their own. So mm-hmm. You surely don't want to have Wyoming factor in this weekend as well. Let me ask you this question. You feel better about, I don't know if you can remember that back that far, you feel better about your chances this weekend than you did at NC State last year or worse? Because they were a top 15 team as well. 100% worse. You feel worse right now? Yes. I thought you had a pretty good shot going into NC State last year. It, at least a puncher's chance. I, yeah. I don't feel like that going into today. Yeah, I feel like that Oregon is more explosive than North Carolina State. And, and you know, I just have – you know, concerns about can you handle their defense? Can you put up enough points? Can you can you put pressure on their quarterback? Um, yeah, so I think that's a good question. I think I think I have more concerns going into tomorrow than I did last week. I had way more concerns last year than this year. Really? Yeah. Why, Why is that? Well, I mean, they had the conference player of the year coming back, a quarterback, and a bunch of his weapons. That team didn't finish well because of all the injuries mm-hmm. they had, including that quarterback. Uh, plus the, I mean, the atmosphere there on a Saturday night, it sure. was legit. And mm-hmm. it clearly, it looked like it, uh, speed of the game just got caught up to your guys. But uh, I, I felt like that was going to be a really, really tough game for our team. And, and it was. Mm-hmm. I feel better about your chances this weekend just because I, I feel like, you know, you're playing at home. You get to have some exciting Saturday night yep. kind of atmosphere and all mm-hmm. that good stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I feel better about your chances this week All right, so, than I did last year. Uh, let me ask you this. Coin flip, you win the toss. Are you defer? defer. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to defer every time. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. From now until eternity. Man, Je- Jeff was really, he was really, he was really quick. I, I That's how quick the decision needs to be made. The coin was, <laughs> was barely in the air, mm-hmm. and he was, he was yelling defer, defer, defer. There is no greater momentum swing Mm -hmm. or no greater momentum punisher than getting points at the end of the at the half whether it be a touchdown or a field goal and then getting the ball back and doing it again that's cool if you can do it Mm -hmm. and if you don't defer you don't guarantee yourself for that chance if you win the coin toss no and, and and then there's there's some that like to, you know, get the ball and drive it, try to drive it right down the field and put points on the board right away and set a know. tone. Huh? Set a tone. Set a tone. Right. Get yep. it. Here we go. Get, get it going. Get the crowd going. Get everybody get, feeling good. Get her, and and then then there's others with, that would say maybe more def, defensive oriented, 
coaches that would say nothing better than to get your opponent to go three and out, yeah, sure, and and then drive it down, then drive it down the field, and and uh, one one thing's for sure, it's going to be um, it, it's going to be a great atmosphere uh, tomorrow uh, over at Jones Stadium. The kick is at six. They encourage you to get there early, uh, get in the stadium. Uh, you can take a, a, a sealed water bottle. It can't be frozen. Um, and uh, I would encourage you to take a... Can't be frozen? Can't be frozen. So in case somebody were to throw it at right, someone? Right, right, right. Gosh, we really have that problem. Well... I know, that's just the world that we live in, that it, we yeah. really could have that problem. Yeah, yeah I'm not blaming anybody. But I also wonder how long it would be frozen if you yeah. did freeze it. Yeah, it'd probably last about five minutes. <laughs> sure, right? sure. And just stand here, Yeah, and mm-hmm. then we'll let you in in five minutes with that water bottle. And then they'll let you... Uh, then they'll have the the refilling stations, uh, you mm-hmm. know, for your water bottles through throughout the stadium tomorrow. Drink plenty of water, guys. Yeah. No, no question. No, like two to one. Anything else you're consuming? No, no question. So it uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be warm down the turf. Uh, it's brand new turf. So you know, I don't know if that plays into anything or not. You know, does it is it squishier or do you is the, is the grass a little longer? Is it you know is it you stub your stub your feet a little bit more. I don't know. It's just it. It looks pretty. Yeah, I it like look, it. It looks pretty. It looks it looks nice. I'm I'm a fan. Um, it looks good. I mentioned that Oregon is picked fourth in the um, in the Pac-12. Uh, they're picked to be behind. I mean, this is uh, certainly understandable. USC, Washington, and Utah. Uh, USC looks to be really really good. Washington is always one of those teams where they're sneaky good just because they're so far away and. You get kind of lost in the in the rubble, so to speak, of you know college football on Saturday afternoon and early evening, and they're playing late and they're playing out in Seattle, and you just it just USC it, they're you know they're a they're a front page kind of school just because of their history over the test of time. Yeah, and but you know Washington just year in and year out is mm-hmm. good. It seems like yeah, no. don't they have a history of having really good offensive linemen out there? Yeah. Like I think that's where their bread and butter is is on the offensive line. Well, that's good. That's because as we as we know, as coaches will tell you, it all it all starts up front, and man, that's that's got to be huge tomorrow for the Red Raiders. I mean, you know the you know Coach McGuire said here uh, with us let, this past summer, it'll be a strength of our team. The, the, and they've all talked about how they've got a more experienced line, they've got more starts, they've got. People playing in the right position, blah 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 blah, and you know that tomorrow's one of those days where they need those guys to really step up and provide protection for Shuck, and also open up holes for whether it's Taj Books or Cameron Valdez or you know the little short passes to Nehemiah Martinez or the jet sweeps or whatever you want to call it. But they need those offensive linemen <clears throat> to make an impact tomorrow. No doubt. I mean, each and every game. That's sure. That's a sure. But I mean, if it, when you've said this, and then last week you didn't really have the game that you wanted them to have, so now is now is the I, time to shine. I mean, technically, they might still have been the strength of the team. That just <clears throat> because other areas played bad. Too. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> of all the things that you did, this is what you did the best of the worst, right? I don't know what was the strength of the team last week. Yeah. Can you contain Bo Nix, their quarterback? That's That becomes a, a question as well. Can you can you figure out a way to, to contain their run game? Because, you know, if they're, if they're scoring 40 or more, uh, I just I, – I, I don't know if you can win the game. Okay, what does a win look like? A win? I I think you've got to be plus two in the turnovers. Um, I think you've got to score touchdowns instead of field goals. And um, you got to eliminate the explosive plays. You've got to have a little luck. you got to get, you got to, you got to give Shuck time to get the ball to his guys. Um, and you, you've, got, you've got to figure out a way to at least – somewhat contain um, Bo Nix. And, and I think I think you need to hold them to under 40. Okay. You need to hold them to under 40. You have to play as close to a perfect game 
as you are capable of. Uh, if no you pressure. have any of the <laughs> letdown that you had last week. Why would you have letdown? If you had any of the let up off the gas pedal that you had last week. If you can't make the coaching uh, adjustments that these guys have proven they can make in the past. They just didn't make them last week. The, you've got no shot in this game if you have that kind of performance. You've got to make your kicks this week. To me, I guess it's like uh, an early double-digit lead, like within the first quarter. Maybe, maybe it's just 10. I don't mm-hmm. know. Early double-digit lead. Probably an early turnover helps you get there. And then you, you just kind of hold on, hold on, and then, you know, by the fourth quarter, it's just back and forth. You know, where it's teeter-tottering, seesawing, and one jumps out in front of the other, and and the other one scores a touchdown, they jump back out in front, one of those kind of ones, and and you just get the ball last. And it's at home, and your crowd is awesome, and uh, they will you to victory. And if Gino Garcia kicks like a 27-yard field goal to win it. So- the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. You just asked us a big question, but now here's another one for you. It's full of questions today. Are you? It's full of them. I need answers. You need Mr. answers, Hines, okay. Mr. <laughs> McGuire. We'll try to we'll try to do the best we can. Coach Coach McGuire told me he was listening in today, so I asked questions that I thought would be valuable. Okay. That you guys could he's, spout out, and he was like, "Oh, okay, I'm write that down." Oh, okay, put great. That, great. Put he's, that on a napkin. Here we go. Listening in his office today, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. What's up, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> all right my question today because I, I we all want coach mcguire to hear this so he makes this happen in the future sure, sure. Okay, with oregon coming down i think that's pretty exciting for a mm-hmm. lot of red raider fans that are exciting to see a team like oregon come here mm-hmm. sure a lot of red raider fans will venture to oregon for the return trip so if you could have the red raider football team schedule any home and home mm. any team across the country who would you want them to have a home and home with This is uh, probably highly unpopular, um, but I, I, I want them to play Texas a and I want to play there. I want to play here. And um, I'd, I'd, I'd love I'd love for it to be a regular deal between... I don't think that's unpopular. A, A&M and, and Texas Tech playing, and then Texas Tech and, and Texas playing. I don't want it to be neutral site. I want it to be Kyle Field, Jones Stadium. Jeff? I like Chuck's answer. I do. I think it's a good one. That's a really good answer. That's kind of uh, where that, I was. I mean, it would be it would be pumped up here. Mm-hmm. It'd be mm-hmm. pumped up both places. They had great crowds at Kyle Field when Tech was showing up too. It it was a both directions rivalry. In fairness, they have great crowds a lot of times. Yeah, yeah pretty much all the time. <laughs> but it it wasn't not there when we were like they showed up too. They wanted to win that game as much as we did. Sure. But if I were to pick somebody that's not a rival. I think it'd be fun to do Tennessee, play at Rocky Top, mm-hmm. and have them come here. Mm-hmm. I, I would hope that the two programs are comparable to each other, where it's not, you know, I don't want to play Alabama in Tuscaloosa at all. I don't all. think we cheat as much as they do. Sure. So I don't know if they're comparable. Is there anything comparable. cheating now with the way it is? It's all... <laughs> I don't know. They seem to have gotten in trouble for it. So clearly they were doing something wrong. Right, yeah. right. I mean, I mean, right. Because, I mean, they, when, when, there's, when there's absolutely almost no possible way that you can cheat, Tennessee found a way to cheat and then get caught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I think that would be a balanced game, I guess is the way to put it. Where it's not a, like, I, I have no interest in going to Alabama and getting housed. They'll or come Georgia here. and getting housed. They'll come here like uh, West Virginia did, you know, that first time and drink all your hooch. <laughs> That's okay. We'll make more. <laughs> like they really drank it all. <laughs> it's a college town. We, we had like, plenty of booze. Like, <laughs> uh, I just love how Chuck thinks West Virginia is the only, it's not the only fan place. base in the country that mm. drinks at their games. Oh, no. They, They're I mean, the only one. I think they drink the heaviest. I think, I think they, they drink the... Oh, 
Why is that doing that? Sorry. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So this one is hard for me because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to turn it off. Just. Is this the put new phone? No, okay. it's my backup phone. My okay. my new phone. They sent me the wrong phone, so I had to send that back. I've had just a, I've had a traumatic week. Okay. <laughs> really have. Okay. Um, and the reason it's hard for me is mm -hmm. because I would love to see Notre Dame play here. Mm -hmm. I think that would get our fan base fired up and excited as well. I just think that would be a lot of fun sure. to see the history and tradition of Notre Dame. And then going up there, touchdown Jesus. I just don't th I see that doesn't appeal to me really? as much as going to play at LSU. Oh, okay, night okay. game there. I okay. would love to go play at LSU. And I'm going to pull a Chuck Hines here, and it's only partly about the game. I just want to take <laughs> wow. in the craziness wow. of what, what the LSU people, okay, and what their tailgating is like. And so I think ultimately my – even though I would much rather have Notre Dame come here than LSU, mm -hmm. I think I would – the whole if I'm picking the whole package, I think I'm taking LSU so we can go get to play there on a Saturday night. Wow. I'm rubbing off on you. That's – Yeah, like the, the whole – that's like people watching kind of – Craziness. Fun. Yeah. 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 No, that, that would be entertaining. That is – That's in the field NASCAR people watching too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I think LSU is my answer. Even though if I was just picking one school to come here and play one game, I'd pick Notre Dame. Yeah. I might be the only person that doesn't give a flying flip about Notre Dame. Playing there, playing here, doesn't get my juices going any more than Colorado would. I, I think it I think it'd be cool to go up there and play at Notre Dame. I I I, I think that would be I think that'd be a I don't know if it's not necessarily a bucket list for me, but I think it'd be cool. I got no desire to see a game there. I've got no desire to see the Red Raiders. But if they did, I'd watch. Let's make this clear. Do not give two shakes of a cat's tail. Two shakes of a cat's tail. Is think. it the dead cat that Chuck's swinging around no. normally? <laughs> <laughs> two shakes. Of a cat's tail. So well, what, what, where does that saying come from? That's a clean version of something I'm not allowed to say on the radio. I mean, if you shake a cat's tail two times, no, the happened? cat shaking its tail twice. <laughs> the actual cat with a, you know, when the cats get annoyed, they just get that little flip with the tail. Oh, when they're annoyed, that's what they do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this LSU tailgating is awesome. They razz the enemy and invite them in for whatever is on the grill. Yeah. Well, yeah, can... but the question is, what's on the grill? Yeah. It's on the grill. <laughs> Don't trust those people. Uh, this uh, Coach and McGuire's if, like... And if they were explaining to you what was on the grill, could you actually understand that? Right, right. Yeah. right. Coach McGuire's like, is this how every segment on the morning drive goes? Yeah, it's pretty pretty much. We don't always oh, have Oh, that was one ring. of the good ones. We talked yeah. sports, yeah. Coach McGuire. Yeah. Uh, somebody brings up USC. I, I, I wouldn't mind going to the Coliseum and seeing... USC play. I think that'd be fun. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. We come to you, Jamie, Jeff, and I from the First United Bank studio, and we uh, ask that you give us a call today and uh, give us your score predictions on the Visual Edge IT hotline, and that's where we find the Senior Associate Athletics Director of External Operations and Strategic Communications, the one, the only, Robert Giovanetti from Texas Tech. Good morning, Robert. Hey guys, I was just telling Jeff, uh, I'm kind of nervous. I've never been on this show before. You guys, don't normally, <laughs> you guys don't normally dig this deep into the into the talent pool. You usually go a little higher to the top. So I appreciate being on. We're well, we're glad to have you, Geo. You're so you're so big time. We've actually run out of time to do this interview with you because Chuck gave your whole title. It took up the full segment. Yeah. It's great to be on, but guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's like you're cutting me off now. <laughs> hey, uh, lo lots going on over at your place, obviously, in a, a sold-out crowd uh, tomorrow, and we really want to encourage people on several different fronts here, Robert. And once you kind of give us the the lowdown of what Jones Stadium is going to look like tomorrow. Yeah, you know it, it it's going to be it's one of those things, right? It's a it's a minor inconvenience, I think, for a year to get the big payoff next year when we're going to have this beautiful stadium that's it's going to rival any in the country but it is a an active ongoing construction site it's not today or tomorrow but they'll be back to work sunday so 
just based on where we are and, and where the construction is, we end up deciding to close that passageway between the east side and the south, and the east side and the west side on the south end of the stadium. So when you see the big indoor track and the and the indoor uh, football facility and the stadium, normally people could pass through there. This year that will be closed, so we're asking people to walk around uh, the stadium. So if you enter on the on the west side, you know Craig Wells, who's a, a good friend of ours and used to work here. He actually, you know, texted me the other day and said, "Hey, a lot of people don't know what these where these gates are, right? That you're referencing. So gate one is the is kind of our main gate that's right across the street from where you guys do your show on Saturdays on the uh, on the southwest side of the stadium. That's primarily where we get most of our people to enter the stadium." Gate three is on the on the northwest side, and then gate four is over on the on the east side of the stadium. So what we're trying to say is, you can come in gate one, you can come in gate three, you can come in gate four, and still use the inner concourse to get around the stadium. So uh, to try to avoid maybe a, a a jam, traffic jam, or a pedestrian jam on the north side of the stadium when people are trying to go back and forth there. So we think it's going to work. We'll open up a little uh, uh, earlier and, and hopefully that uh, we'll get people in and, and get you to your seats and enjoy a win over Oregon. Uh, the other thing that uh, you're obviously encouraging people to do is get there early, but also uh, they can bring a water bottle, can't be frozen, it's got to be sealed, and then you'll have uh, cooling stations uh, tomorrow uh, all, all around the stadium, won't you? Yeah, I, the, the cooling stations have been really great for us uh, because, uh, you know, there's – it's it's so hot and we're 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 obviously always concerned about the the fan safety and we, we've had games at this time of year in the afternoon this one fortunately be in the evening where it'll be a, a little cooler but yeah you can bring a, a bottle of water as long as it's not hasn't hasn't been opened and you, you come in and you can drink it and you go refill it as many times as you want we'll have those stations at all four corners of the stadium you, you just need to cool off and go over there generally they have fans over there but they have a, a big uh, tank of of cold water that you can refill your bottle as many times as, as you want and so we hope that that people will take advantage of that um, the the west side will, will I've, I've been out there every day about the time kickoff will be and obviously west side will be in the shade chuck you over there on the east side you'll be you'll be in the sun for a little bit, but we think the, the weather is going to be fine and manageable. But if you do feel like you, you need to be hydrated, we want to help you with that as well. We've, we've added some great uh, points of sale also inside the stadium for people that, that want to need to purchase something. We've got a new marketplace on it. Chuck, you'll be glad this on the East side It's called take three. You can go in there and kind of grab and go. And uh, we're, we're trying to do some things inside the, inside the stadium also to help the experience and help people get their items and get back to their seats in a more timely fashion. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm always fascinated, like when you go to an airport and you just you just walk in and that just somehow magically scans your debit card. I I really I'm not smart enough to know how that works, but uh, it appears to work and work really well. And and I'm excited that we've got that on the east side now that I can go in there and grab and go and. I guess it'll, I'll get charged. I'm sure. So it'll be. <laughs> yeah, get, well, you, well, yeah. You're, there'll be somebody there to, to scan your card. We're not okay. quite. It, we're not like the airport yet. But, okay. Uh, but yeah, we'll make sure you can't get back with your peanuts without paying for them. So uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll be watching you. And you know, I normally walk by your seat once a game, and so I'll see if you've got some uh, contraband that we need to take care of. Okay. okay. Gio, uh, in the last few years, you guys have introduced new food items. Is uh, is there a few more coming this year as well? Yeah, you know, and Jeff's going to probably be a bigger expert on that than I am because he was at the at the food tasting. Uh, we did a, a food tasting for the media. I know you guys didn't come, but Jeff didn't miss the opportunity to get out there for the for the food testing. Yeah, he does. He can't. doesn't miss many of those, Gio. <laughs> I, I did miss it. I, I had something going on, and I, and then I realized that I'd missed it, and I was really disappointed. So, what's the what's the new big attraction? Well, I, I, so I was going to say I was just going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not really even sure what the what the new big attraction is. I know they've got um, they had a whole slew of, of menu items out there. I had to leave when when they were doing it, so I didn't get a chance to to go over the items. But the food there is always great. They've got they've always got. Uh, I did see they had quesadillas out there, but I know they've had those mm-hmm. in the past. They've got sliders out there. They've got almost anything you could want um, will be available there at the uh, in in all most of the concession stands. Got a new chicken sandwich uh, with a little honey, 
honey mustard sauce, I think, on on top that's supposed Ooh. to be uh, supposed oh, to be really nice. good. Okay. Yeah, so there I'm you go. Really so a big honey mustard guy, but I, I appreciate the thought. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, uh, listen, uh, it's it's uh, it's exciting, and I heard you yesterday on Tech Talk say that you expect all six games to be sold out. So if there's a game that you're wanting to go to down the line, don't dilly dally. Get your tickets today. No, you, you don't want to dilly-dally. There's still tickets available for uh, Kansas State, for TCU, and Central Florida, but uh, we feel really good about those, and we think the team's going to be uh, successful. And, and I think it's – and I think people will be kind of blown away when they come in this year and see the stadium. I, literally every day when I come to work, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. That, that, was, that wasn't here yesterday. They, they've gotten this uh, added to the, to the south end zone. And so it, it's really uh, – already looks really cool and it's not even one tenth of what it's going to look like next year but uh, it'll be interesting to watch that too and, and chuck this is probably right up your alley right to kind of watch every week to see what changes have been made from the previous week since you've been there but it, it's um it's one year of maybe a minor inconvenience for our fans for uh, a lifetime of this stadium being really one of the best in the country and we're excited about it we're excited we're so thankful for the donors that have helped make this happen we're thankful for our fans who've already purchased a lot of tickets and let's uh, make it hard on the ducks tomorrow night and then uh, move on down the road thank you robert it was a hot honey chicken sandwich and i'm excited about the light show i'm excited about seeing everything and the new lights and how it's all going to work it's all going to be fun tomorrow uh kickoff is at six as uh, texas tech takes on oregon thank you this has been the morning drive podcast presented by cantex roofing and construction check out our library of double t 97.3 podcasts at double t 97.3.com